This work, written by Fereddin Air Razi, concerns the proofs demonstrating that Allah the Exalted is not confined to a place or a direction. It is obligatory to state that the notion of Allah the Exalted being in a specific location or direction that can be pointed to is false. If it is said that Allah the Exalted is one, free from composition and division, why should it not be permissible to say that he is also great? The divisibility applies only to visible entities. Why do you insist it applies to the unseen? It is known that comparing the ultimate goal to the witnessed is invalid unless there is a unifying aspect between them. Even if it necessitates smallness and insignificance, why should the indivisibility of Allah the Exalted not be permissible? Something that cannot be pointed to and is imperceptible is as if it does not exist. Non-existence is worse than being diminished. Yet, if this state is due to ignorance, why should our proposed state not be permissible? In response to the first question, we say that if Allah the Exalted is great, then divisibility becomes inevitable and this conclusion is not a mere analogy to a constant witness but a result of a definitive proof. When we point to an indivisible point, there is either something above it or not. If there is something above, then it is distinct from the pointed point. Saying they are the same would mean equating parts, which leads to the absurd conclusion that a large mountain is a single, indivisible part. This would lead to doubt in self-evident truths. Thus, it is established that composition and divisibility are unavoidable. If there is nothing above the pointed point, and nothing to its sides or below, then it is an indivisible point and part, which is unanimously false according to reason. This established, the judgment in this matter is not an analogy to a constant witness but a division between negation and affirmation. The Hanbalis who accept composition and compilation for all of the exalted, are in a better position than the Karamites. At least they acknowledge that all of the exalted is not composed of parts or pieces. The Karamites claim that all of the exalted is both pointable and infinite, and also indivisible. Their amalgamation of these contradictions is contrary to reason. They claim that something imperceptible and unpointable is more insignificant than an indivisible part. In response, we say that such insignificance only applies when there is a connection in space and measure. Only then can one measure and say it is this small. But when transcending space and measure, it is not possible to compare and label as poor or small, nor is it necessary to attribute these demeaning qualities. Secondly, if Allah the Exalted were in a place or direction, he would be dependent on that place or direction, which is inconceivable since it leads to a fallacy. The explanation that being in a place necessitates dependency is as follows, a place and direction exist. The evidence for this is that a place and direction, in reality and essence, are distinct and different from what is below. Therefore, it is said that it is necessary for all of the exalted to be in an upper direction, and impossible to be in other directions. If places were not different in essence, saying that it is necessary for all of the exalted to be in an upper direction and impossible in others would be meaningless. Once it is established that places and directions are different, their existence becomes necessary. Absolute non existence cannot be distinct. If something ceases to exist when another does, it is inherently possible. All of the exalted, being inherently necessary, cannot be inherently possible. A place and direction, being composed of parts and measurable for excess and deficiency, are inherently dependent. Being dependent, they are inherently possible. The conclusion is that a place and direction are inherently possible. Therefore, if all of the exalted were dependent on a place or direction, he would be dependent on something inherently possible, which is more conceivable than the necessary being dependent on the possible, which means making the necessary possible. If it were possible for the necessary, Allah, to be contingent, it would be absurd. If all of the exalted had been in a place and direction from eternity, 
then that place and direction would have existed from eternity as well. Consequently, there would be something eternal other than Allah the Exalted, which is unanimously impossible according to Muslim scholars. Thus, it is established that if Allah the Exalted were in a place and direction, the mentioned problems would inevitably arise. Therefore, the existence of Allah the Exalted in a place and direction is impossible. If it is said that Allah the Exalted's existence in a place and direction means that He is distinct, separate, and distinguished from the universe, this does not require anything other than His essence. Given this, your claim that if Allah the Exalted were in a direction, it would entail rivalry is baseless. The proof that your statement is true is that physical entities undeniably exist in space and direction. The meaning of their existence in space and direction is simply that some of them are separate and distinguished from others. If this is the meaning of physical entities existing in space and direction, why should the same meaning not be permissible for all of the exalted's existence in space and direction? This is the claim of our opponent who says that Allah the Exalted is not something that exists in space and direction. In response, we say that we have proven that these are existent entities. Having proved this, there should be no doubt that he exists in space and direction, meaning that he is distinct, separate, and distinguished from the universe. However, the meanings of these words are not clear. Sometimes they imply being different in reality and essence. There is no dispute that Allah the Exalted is distinct from the universe in this sense. However, this meaning does not require space and direction. The proof is that the reality of Allah the Exalted is different from the reality of space and direction. This difference is not in terms of space and direction. For the distinction and difference of Allah the Exalted from a place and direction are not due to another place and direction. If the opposite were true, it would lead to an infinite regression. Sometimes the meaning of space and direction implies distinction and clarity, meaning that something is here or there and can be pointed to. Our opponent's statement that all of the exalted is distinct, separate, and distinguished from the universe refers to this meaning. However, we have explained with good evidence that this meaning requires space to be an existent entity and that what exists in space is dependent on it. Our response to the opponent's statement that physical bodies originate in space is that this situation shows that physical bodies are dependent on something else, which is not impossible for them. However, the dependency of Allah the exalted on something else is impossible. There is a clear difference in this regard. Success comes from Allah alone. The third proof, if Allah the Exalted were in a direction and place, he would have to be in one of three states, either limitless in all directions, limitless in some directions, or limited in all directions. However, all three of these states are false. Therefore, saying that Allah the Exalted is in a place or direction is false. The first state is false because the existence of an infinite distance and extent is impossible. The proof of this is that assuming such a distance and extent leads to absurdity. The proof that this leads to absurdity is as follows, assume there is an infinite distance and extent, and parallel to it at the end, there is another distance. After that, the finite distance exits its parallel course and overlaps the infinite distance. This event would require the creation of a point on the infinite line, the first point of meeting. Because the finite line was not on the infinite line before, but then it came over it. Therefore, the meeting must start from a point. However, the infiniteness of the first line prevents the formation of this point. Because the point above would occur before the point below. However, if the line is infinite, there is always another point before each point on it. This prevents the occurrence of meeting at a specific point. Thus, it is established that the event of two distances overlapping on the infinite distance both requires and prevents the creation of a meeting point. 
This contradiction and impossibility arise from considering the first distance as infinite. Therefore, this situation is absurd. This also establishes that the existence of an infinite distance and extent is impossible. If the existence of an infinite distance is not impossible, it would be impossible to prove that the universe is finite, which is unanimously false. If all of the exalted were infinite in all directions, nothing in space and direction would exist outside his essence. In this case, impurities and filth in the universe would mix with the parts of Allah's essence. However, no sane person would say this. The impossibility of Allah the exalted being infinite in some directions and finite in others is due to the following reasons. Firstly, the existence of an infinite distance upwards is impossible. This situation would require Allah the exalted's essence to be compound, which, as we have explained, is false. Secondly, as we have previously explained, the word created has no other meaning than being in a place and extending in a direction. Because quantity can be a characteristic, its existence is necessary. This text is a complex theological discussion in Islamic philosophy, particularly focusing on the nature of Allah in relation to space and direction. Here's a complete and accurate translation to English. Therefore, all directions are equal. Given this, it is impossible to say that one direction of a thing is opposed to another. The reasons why the concept of Allah the exalted being finite in all directions is false are as follows. First, anything that is finite in all directions would be subject to increase and decrease, and as we have explained, would be needy. Second, if Allah the exalted were finite in all directions, there could be an empty space above him. In this case, Allah the exalted would not be above all, because these spaces and directions would be above him. Moreover, Allah the exalted is capable of creating bodies in empty spaces and directions. Therefore, if the existence of an empty space or direction is assumed, Allah the exalted could create bodies in them, and these bodies would then be above his essence. However, this is also absurd according to our opponent. Thus, it is established that if Allah the Exalted were in a direction, the situation would not be free from these three possibilities, and all these possibilities are false. Therefore, saying that Allah the Exalted is in a space or direction is impossible. If it is argued, do you not say that Allah the Exalted is infinite in his essence? Then, the proofs you mentioned to enlighten us should enlighten you too. We say that the term infinite is of two kinds. One is without any specific place and direction, such a being cannot have an end or limit in any direction. The other is specific to a place and direction but still does not have an end or limit in its essence. We affirm the former for all of the exalted, but if you mean the latter, then the proofs we mentioned apply to you and not to us, because we do not mean infinite in the sense you imply. There is a clear difference between us, and certainly, Allah the Exalted knows best. The fourth proof, if Allah the Exalted were in a direction and place, he would either be corporeal or incorporeal. Both these possibilities are false. Therefore, Saying that Allah the Exalted is in a direction or place is false, and its occurrence is impossible. The reasons why the corporeal existence of Allah the Exalted in space and direction is impossible are, first, if Allah the Exalted were in a space and direction, he would be subject to being in a space and extending in a direction, like other bodies. This would establish equality, and as we pointed out in the first proof regarding the negation of precedence, it would establish that the entire essence competes. Once competition is established, any judgment true for one competitor must necessarily be true for the other. Therefore, just as it is not necessary for other entities to be in a space, it would not be necessary for all of the exalted's essence to be in a space either. This is the conclusion we seek. Second, 
if all of the exalted's existence were necessary in one direction but impossible in others, then this particular direction would be different in essence from the other direction. Then directions would be existent and divisible entities. In this case, if it were necessary for all of the exalted to be in a direction eternally, there would be another eternal entity besides him, which is impossible. Third, it would be permissible to say that something specific and attached to a certain direction is contingent upon this specificity and attachment. If this were permissible, then it would also be permissible to claim that some bodies are created through corporeality while being in space. If this were permissible, then the more profound proofs applicable to these bodies would not apply. Thus, it is established that those who say this cannot claim that all bodies are contingent. They would have to consider some bodies as eternal. Fourth, we know for certain that all directions are essentially equal, as they all exist in a void. When they host something, they become one. This situation prevents the necessity of saying that all of the exalted is specifically and definitively in certain directions. If it is argued, why is it not permissible to say that all of the exalted is in the upper direction? We say it is false for two reasons. First, before the creation of the universe, there was only non-existence and absence, so there was no up or down. Without these, it is impossible to say that being in the upper direction is more appropriate. Second, if the upper direction were distinguished from the lower direction with an inherent quality, then directions would be existent and divisible entities. This would necessitate the pre-existence of bodies in space because bodies would then exist in these spaces. Third, if directions, despite being equivalent from a rational standpoint, allowed all of the exalted to be corporeal in some directions, then it would also be permissible for certain specific events, despite being equivalent from a rational standpoint, to be corporeal in some times. This would mean that these events would be co-eternal with the Creator. And it would be permissible for non-eternal things to be corporeal in some times. If this were the case, then the path to proving the existence of the Creator and His corporeality and eternity would be blocked. Fourth, if all of the exalted were in a way that made exit impossible, he would be like a paralyzed person unable to move, bound hand and foot. This condition is deficient, and it is impossible for all of the exalted. The corporeal existence of all of the exalted in space and direction is also impossible because, if so, it would only occur through the action of an agent and the choice of a selector. In this case, the agent would precede the event of Allah the exalted being in a direction. Then, the event of Allah the exalted being in a direction would not be eternal. Allah the exalted is transcendent and exalted from space and direction eternally, and acquiring specificity in space and direction later is impossible. Otherwise, there would have to be a change and transformation in the essence of Allah the exalted, which is impossible. Success comes only from Allah. This establishes that the specification of Allah the exalted in a direction is impossible. The sixth proof, if Allah the exalted had a specification in a direction, he would be equivalent to the finite years, that is, to those in space and direction. The equivalence of Allah to other entities is absurd. Therefore, his need for a direction is also absurd. The explanation of why the former necessitates the latter is as follows, if Allah the Exalted had a specificity in a direction, it would prevent another entity from being in the same direction. This is because it means the following, if that were the case, then he would be finite. As we explained earlier, all finite years are essentially similar to the entirety of nature. Therefore, if Allah the Exalted were finite, he would be similar to other finite years. This is impossible for the following reason, entities that are similar to each other are necessarily equal in all their implications and judgments. Consequently, they all must be either eternal or created. However, the createdness of Allah the Exalted is impossible. 
If it is said that the presence of something in a space and direction, and preventing another from being in the same place, is one of the essential judgments, and equality in judgments does not necessarily mean equality in essence, the answer is twofold. First, a finite entity has three judgments, being in a place and occupying it, preventing another from being in the same place, and increasing in volume and size when something is added. Undoubtedly, every entity that enters a space and direction has these three aspects. However, the common fundamental concept in entities characterized by these aspects is volume and size. This aspect is common to all entities that have volume. We have already explained with evidence that the common aspect cannot be an attribute, it must be essence. Therefore, finite entities are essentially similar to each other. Their differences are only in attributes. This establishes that the essence of our argument is contrary to what has been stated. Second, if what you say is true, then it would be impossible for you to assert that substances are similar and equivalent to each other in a categorical manner. Because then it could be said, substances, by being in space, share this aspect, and sharing a judgment does not necessarily imply sharing in essence. The assertion that substances are similar to each other would not be substantiated. Consequently, the existence of some substances that specialize in certain spaces would not be far from reason. In this case, the proof of the createdness of bodies would not apply to these substances. Allah knows best. The seventh proof, if Allah the exalted had specificity in a space and direction, he would be large, as no one with reason would say that Allah the exalted, being in this direction, is like an indivisible small part or an unpartitioned piece. On the contrary, those who say he has a direction also say he is large in essence. Given this, we say that the part of the throne falling to the right of Allah the exalted, if assumed, would be the same and different from the part falling to the left. The first option is false because if this were reasonable, then saying that the right side of the throne is the same as the left, and despite the throne's size, it is like a single substance and indivisible part, would also be reasonable. However, no sane person would say this. The second option is false because, in this case, all of the exalted's essence would be composed of parts. These parts would either be similar or dissimilar in essence. The first option is false because then some similar parts would be together while others would be apart. A judgment true for one of two similar things is true for the other. According to this, the parts that are together should be able to separate and those that are apart should be able to come together. This necessitates the permissibility of gathering and dispersing in the essence of Allah the Exalted, which is impossible. The second option, where parts are dissimilar in essence, leads to the conclusion that a body composed of parts dissimilar in essence must ultimately be composed of simple, indivisible parts. This is because composition is nothing but the gathering of simple elements. If such simple elements do not exist, then their gathering cannot be conceived. Therefore, we say that each of these simple parts touching something with its right side and something else with its left, yet still being the same as the right, is necessary. Otherwise, it would be composed within itself, which we have assumed impossible. Therefore, if this were not the case, contradiction and inconsistency would arise. Once the same as the right is established, we know that things that are identical to each other are partners in all their implications and judgments. Therefore, the left must also be able to touch what the right touches, and the opposite must also be true. If this is true, then the parts would have the ability to disperse and dissolve. This means that gathering and dispersing are permissible for the essence of Allah the Exalted, which is impossible. This establishes that saying Allah the Exalted is in a direction leads to these impossibilities. Therefore, this situation is impossible. Success is indeed from Allah. The eighth proof, 
If all of the exalted superiority in the world and being above were in terms of direction, this superiority would be for the direction, not for all of the exalted. For if all of the exalted were assumed to be on the right or left of the universe, being above the universe could not be attributed to him. However, preferring the upper direction for the quality of being above is not possible. This establishes that the mentioned direction is superior in its essence to the universe. Therefore, something that is in this direction is superior, not because of its essence, but because it is in an upper direction. Given this, all of the exalted would be in a deficient state, needing completion by direction, which is impossible. This establishes that all of the exalted superiority over the universe is the sought-after conclusion. The absolute owner of this conclusion is Allah.